people's first impression of me because of my profession is that I'm gay. That's their first the first impression. You know, and um I've always had a boyfriend throughout my entire career. I was with one boyfriend for four years, another one for three. My boyfriend now has been together seven months. You know, I've always had a boyfriend, you know, so it's like I don't get why I why people still think that I want to get into your journey, which I, I think is um, really compelling, very inspiring, so much so that it was a documentary about it. And also, I believe a movie, right? They're doing a movie on your life, yeah. correct? All right. Do you a, know who's a movie playing? with uh, Universal Studios. Okay. Do you know who's playing you yet? Yes, Ryan Destiny. Ryan Destiny. That's right, from uh, Detroit, right? Yep. And then Ice Cube is playing my boxing coach. <laughs> so how much, did you have any input into who got to play you? Um, I threw them some ideas to people, but I, I I like to let people do their job. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> my job is to box and you know kick ass, and I don't want nobody who doesn't box trying to tell me how to box. So I just told them like who I who I thought should play me, and I was and and I'm a huge fan of not of not Lisa Williams, and I kind of think me and her look alike. She got like that that mean side to her, so I thought maybe it should have been her. But um, they ended up picking Ryan Destiny. But but a night piece did get the script, and she did get to to I think uh talk with them or something like that. But she but they ended up picking Ryan Destiny. So so how does that feel to know that one day you're gonna you know in theaters everybody's gonna see what is is your life? Does that feel kind of weird? Uh no, I'm always in front of the cameras. People always want to know what I'm doing. Um. No, like after having my actual documentary T-Rex and being followed by like a camera crew for two, two to three years of my life, like I, I, I would rather somebody else play me than, <laughs> than, you know, me be hooked up to a mic and have a camera in my face in my, in my real life. Like if they were asking me to do another documentary, my first answer would be no. It would have to do, I like, like they would have to say something to like really convince me like, yeah. Like, okay, but right now, if they were the first act, my first answer would be, nope, I don't want to do it. Because it was just like, I was with them every day. And they went to school with me. They were with me when I had arguments with my with my boyfriend at the time. Like, they were just there all the time. And it was like, I don't have any kind of privacy. And when you get used to wearing a mic, sometimes you forget you have it on. So, you know, you're just talking like, ugh. I'm so glad that they went home and they took the camera in my face and you like, oh, that's the mic on. <laughs> yeah, the mic is always high. That's a, a, a rule that we have definitely in, in, in television. Um, but yeah, before getting into your journey, uh, into your journey um, tell me about the first time that you felt like you were famous. Mm, you wouldn't believe this, but Growing up in my gym, I've always been the only girl at my gym. And it was times when we had girls come and go. But when I first signed up, it was about like 20 guys. And I was a little girl in the gym. I was 11 years old. And the first time I sparred, I was 11 years old, maybe 11 years old and a half. And um, every time I've ever sparred, anytime I've ever gotten a ring and box, people have always surrounded the ring to watch me in awe from the time I ever got into the ring. I don't know if it was because I was a girl and I was just me and I know how to fight or if my or if it was just my skills, but I've always kind of been like a superstar in my in my own world and in my own head. And then all of a sudden the cameras come around. I always know what to say, how to conduct myself. Like I don't get nervous. People like to say, hey, we're just gonna be a be a fly on the wall. Do you mind? I'm like, I don't mind. Because I'm used to cameras, right? So to actually, I mean, I feel like I've always been famous, but I get, I guess the first time when it really, really, really hit me, I can say after I, I became a three-time division world champ, and it was in, and, and it was some fights, and it was some fights in Vegas. Actually, it was Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury too, mm-hmm. and um, I'm actually going to rewind to Tyson Fury one because I was there both, but Tyson Fury. Deontay Wilder won. Um, Showtime had gave me a ticket to the fight, and it was like one row from the floor, so I could see the floor. The floor is right there, but I'm not on the floor. I'm like with the with the regular crowd, right? This is the and, one in um, L.A., right? Yes. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I was in that fight too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yep. Got you. So I'm I'm sitting there watching the fight, and I must have like made like a video like, "Hey, I'm about to Deontay Wilder fight or blah, you know, Team Bomb Squad." And I'm just sitting there, and I took a video. And from me taking this video on my phone, on my Snap story, or on my Instagram story, fans started finding me and asking me, could I take pictures? So I'm thinking, it's okay, the first 10 people, all right, cool. But then it was 20 people, then it was 30, and it was 40, and then all you know, all night, I was taking pictures. And as much as I love my fans, but I love to watch the boxing matches, the undercard, the co-main, the main event, I love to watch it, but it was just like, for me making that post, all those all my fans came and found me. They wanted pictures. They were talking to me. And they were really disrupting me watching the fight, to be honest. But I had to write Showtime a note and say, hey, next time you guys um, want to invite me to a fight and everything, if, if, I'm not, if I'm not on the floor, I would like to sit at, I, I can watch the fight from home. Because <laughs> or you the, know what? Make them put you in a, in a suite. How about that? <laughs> yeah, go. I was just like, it was just like, like it was too overwhelming for me. Like I didn't have any security guards, right? And it was like I just took so many pictures throughout the night. So now we fast forward, Deontay Wilder too. Um, and I and I get their fight week. The fans are literally chasing me through the MGM Grand. Like that's when I knew. Like all right, Stardom has went up the roof. You need at least one security guard because. These fans, they can get crazy. They can get crazy for sure. Have you had a like a crazy or a weird fan encounter? Plenty. Mm. I I've been proposed to on the on the strip in Vegas at least five times. And one guy actually had a ring, the other four didn't. But I just was like, what makes you want to propose to me? I just always laugh, like, I'm, I'm, I am I'm, got to go. It's too much. <laughs> I just walk <laughs> off. But that's probably, I would, like, call, like, a weird encounter. Like, a guy proposing to me who I don't know who's a fan. And we take a picture, and after he, like, Tim, I'm just so in love with you. I'm like, no, you're not. You don't know me. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I imagine, because um, I don't think people look at it from this perspective, because we're always hearing the narrative for male athletes and all the attention that they receive from, you know, female fans yeah. or female admirers. Being as famous as you are, and particularly the profession that you're in, what kind of mm-hmm. challenges does that pose for you in terms of relationships and dating? <laughs> dating and relationships? Um, well, I have a boyfriend now. We've been together for seven months. But I will say that people's first impression of me because of my profession is that I'm gay. That's their first the first impression. You know, and um, I've always had a boyfriend throughout my entire career. I was with one boyfriend for four years, another one for three. My boyfriend now, we've been together seven months. You know, I've always had a boyfriend, you know. So it's like I don't get why I why people still think that I'm potentially gay which I don't really have a problem with them thinking that's nothing wrong with being gay it is what it is but um that's something that I get all the time or they just get that I'm super like that I'm super serious and when I'm not I'm like so chill everybody know like as long as you don't disrespect me I won't disrespect you and that's anywhere that's that, that's on social media that's in person that's to a fan or or to a troll you don't disrespect me I won't disrespect you because I'm not a disrespectful person. I think that people think that boxers are like so just mean and err. Uh, and it's like, we're some of the softest and nicest human beings there are really. We're not like super mean as people paint us out to be. We're, we're actually very, very nice and we're very humble and we come from humble beginnings. But I don't, I don't get that from people. People say, oh, you know, you like you trash talk you tough you probably beat your boyfriends up and they just say all kind of stuff and I'm like no I don't do no 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 domestic violence (laughs) this is not me (laughs) (laughs) what is it um difficult um or I imagine like a woman in your position because you do get a lot of attention that you need to be with somebody who's really secure in who they are um yeah yeah I mean was it difficult to like kind of find somebody like that that could handle all the wattage that you're going to bring to the relationship. 
Yeah, but that's still something that, that I worry about, though. Because I'm used to cameras and I'm used to being judged and I'm used to people always kind of saying things about me. But in my relationship, like if I can use, for example, now, you know, um, he don't really like a lot of attention. Like he sometimes he's okay with it, but he's not used to it all the time. And I think that even like for my best friends, when we go out to eat, they're like, you know, we would like to come out to eat with you, have a good time, you know, talk and laugh without you having to get up every, you know, two minutes to take a picture. And I tell them all the time, like, it kind of just come with the territory, you know, like, a fan who I'm taking a picture with can be somebody who possibly bought my pay-per-view fight, you know, so I can't be all like, uh, I'm not taking no pictures when it's like, it takes two seconds, but um, it just, it just got to know who you're with. And I try to explain to my boyfriend now who I'm with, like, look, this fight coming up, I want you to know. People are going to get weird. And he was like, they already getting weird. They asked me for tickets. Da, da, da. I ain't got no tickets. I'm like, I know. I know. But I'm telling you, like, just kind of don't get overwhelmed because your phone about to start blowing up. You're going to get a whole bunch of text messages. People are going to reach out to you, haven't reached out to you in years. Like, people are going to come to the gym, be looking for me. Like, it's going to get overwhelming. And I had to tell him, like, you know, just kind of just, like, be normal and don't really let it, like, freak you out, you know. But the guy I'm with is super confident, though. He's super confident in who he is. He's a business owner. Uh, he's a he's an entrepreneur he's a gym owner he do so he and so much stuff so he's not like insecure about money or anything like that only thing he always says like i gotta make sure he like he practices uh kickboxing and also boxing he like i gotta make sure i can handle myself because you be in a room with a bunch of killers <laughs> you know like dudes who fight so he's like he want to be ready or whatever